Access Church. Good morning. All you guys that are milling around, Anthony, come on, man. Have a seat. JP, get down here. Let's find a seat. Manuel, get down here. Let's go. It's time to start worshiping. It's time for church. If you guys want, I got Fontaine's notes. We can just get right into it. In the beginning. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, let's go ahead. I think I'm going to do the announcements, and then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into worship. If you're new to Access this morning, if you look on the back of the seats in front of you, there's a QR code, and if you want to scan that with your phone, if you're technologically capable of that, then you can uh, see all the things that are happening here in Access and get involved. There's small groups. There's all kinds of wonderful things, and we want to uh, get you plugged in, and we want to get to know you if you're new. And so check that out. If you're not technologically capable, just see me or Fontaine or somebody who looks official with a badge and we'll get you hooked up. Um, if si ustedes necesitan traducción y no hablas inglés, hay ayuda, hay equipo aquí en uh, la mesa arriba para ayudar. Bueno. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and pray, then we're going to take the offering. Let me pray to just get us settled, get us in the spirit, and uh, invite the Lord here with us. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for uh, another beautiful day in Guatemala, Lord. Thank you for the change of clima, where it's not so hot in here. It's nice and comfortable. Lord, we're just grateful for the opportunity to come to a beautiful place with beautiful people and worship you. We're not coming here necessarily for you to give us anything, but for us to give you something, Lord. And so we just invite your Holy Spirit here, Lord, whatever, we, whatever problems, whatever issues, concerns, cares, we're just going to leave those at your feet and we're, gonna, we're just going to tell you what a wonderful God you are, what a glorious God you are, how we love you, we thank you, we're blessed. So Lord, please be with us this morning. Please make our worship be a, a savory aroma to you and a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the offering. We're kind of mixing it up a little bit. We're going to do this at the start, and then we'll get right into worship, and bam, right into the Word. So you guys want to come forward with the baskets? There are four ways to give. As you can see, you can make bank transfers to the account uh, on the screens in front of you. You can do POS at the front. Uh, you can transfer money online at access.gt, or you can put money in the baskets. And so... Thanks for coming this morning. With only three people here, maybe I should just stay up here and sing? No? Okay. Bless you. Okay. Good morning, Access Church. So glad to see you here. Uh, please stand up. Stand up. We're going to worship the Lord. Amen. Jesús, tu copa no se secará. Tu presencia, tu presencia es el cielo para mí. Tu presencia es el cielo. Tesoro de mi alma y corazón Me das tu gracia aunque de mi sol De mis errores eres redentor De mi futuro eres el guardador 
tu presencia, tu presencia es el cielo para mí. Tu presencia es el cielo para mí. Oh Señor, tu presencia, tu presencia es el cielo para mí. Tu presencia es el cielo para mí Lo cantamos por oh, Cristo oh, oh, Tu presencia es el cielo para mí Tenga vida, esperaré cuando cara a cara te veré. Nada en este mundo saciará. Jesús, tu copa no se secará. Nada en este mundo y nada en este mundo saciará. Jesús tu copa, Jesús tu copa no se secará Oh Jesús tu copa, Jesús tu copa no se secará Tu presencia, tu presencia es el cielo para mí Hermosa tu presencia Dios, tu presencia es el cielo para mí Alza tu voz, tu presencia Es el cielo para mí Tu presencia Presencia es el cielo para mí. Gracias, Señor. Aleluya. Thank you, Lord. 
Tocando mi corazón, te adoraré, te adoraré. Milagroso, abres caminos, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Cantamos, milagroso, abres caminos, cumples promesas. Luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Milagroso, abres caminos, cumples promesas. Luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Así eres tú, así eres tú, así eres tú, así eres tú. Así eres tú, así eres tú, así eres tú. Aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando, siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Yeah. 
así eres tú y así eres tú y así eres tú Says we're nothing without you, Lord. That we need you. That we love you, Jesus. Gathered today in your presence and 
among your people, your community, who call this home, our house where we gather, Lord, once a week to just gather in your presence and seek only you. We're reminded today as we sing of, God, you're always at work. You're working miracles. You work while we sleep. You're always working. And we as a people, by faith believing, God, we believe you are at work on our behalf. And I, I know in this room today, there is without a doubt, there are, there are needs represented here. Unknowns. Things that we can't fix on our own. And you don't even want us to. What you'd love for us to do, because you're a good, good father... Is that, Lord, you are concerned and you care and you lovingly care for every person here within the sound of my voice and those joining us online. Every unmet need, you would invite us today to trust you by faith believing. God, you are good and your plans are good. And we can lean into you and we can trust you. And that, God, you will carry us through. Oftentimes in our humanity, we would love for you to remove obstacles. And oftentimes experience says that you instead, you walk with us through every obstacle. Through the valley of the shadow of death. Through every unknown. Through every discouragement. God, you are with us. You do not leave us. You do not forsake us. And so today, as we lean into your word... God, let faith arise in this room today. Some need to trust you for salvation, and maybe today could be the day of salvation for someone. Others, they're saved, but they're managing life on their own. And you'd remind the believer today to trust you by faith believing. God, may faith arise today as your word illuminates truth for us. And we as your people, we as a community, we embrace your truth. We invite you to transform and renew our minds. We invite you to do what only the God of heaven can do in the middle of every circumstance. We trust you today. We love you today. We honor you today in the name that is above all names, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, amen, amen. Let's give him a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. Hey, before you sit down, if you've already sat down, why don't you get back up? Greet somebody around you. And give me just a moment to get set up here. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Good work. Great work. Hey.
Okay, with that, Access Kids, why don't you, uh, you guys go ahead and be dismissed, Access Kids, carefully, slowly, in order. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. And happy July, everyone. Glad you're here today. It's first Sunday in July. We gather here at Access Church, and we are in the book of Matthew. Someone asked me, where, uh, where are we going this week? Well, we're going to continue in Matthew, because it just gets better and better. <laughs> and uh, in fact, might maybe get a little hot in here today. I know the, we got good airflow, but Jesus gets, uh, I got it, I got it, I got it. I do them all, all my own stunts here. We got it. We got it. Okay. But we're in Matthew, Matthew, tax collector turned Jesus follower, uh, becoming writer of the gospel, a go-to gospel, so rich, so deep, and we're taking parallel passages, pulling those together. If you're not in anything else for discipleship, this is a great opportunity for you to lean into discipleship, take the word, take it home with you, look for application for your own life. Um, that that would be a recommendation, and then I also would recommend you you do get into a, a group of some kind. That's uh, that's a great next step for a lot of people that are here today, because you you should not just be a Sunday morning Christian only. <laughs> you should not be a Sunday morning only Christian. Some people get, get frustrated with me. You know what, Pastor, you don't, you don't check on me. Guys, I, I don't know when you're here and when you're not. It's going to get hotter. <laughs> but if you're today, like some people aren't technology people. Guys, I got these paper cards, and it's a great opportunity. If you're here and I have, we haven't met each other or it's been a while, I'm going to set these right here. I get these every week. Uh, just um, I've even got a pen maybe, yep. Got a pen. You can fill that out. I'd love to shake hands, greet you, and help you with the next step. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Matthew, I said, was a tax collector because here's what happens. Jesus says, come follow me, and he's been in a very lucrative business of ripping people off. And Jesus, in his love and mercy, grace, extends invitation, come follow me, Matthew, but what that also means is that you are going to leave the, that, that business of ripping people off for money, and you're going to come follow me, and it's going to be different. And yeah, you don't know anything yet too much. You know a few basics, of, uh, but you, you're going to learn something totally new about a brand new kingdom. And so repent, leave that behind. I want you to note that today as we walk into this, because Jesus did not just leave him alone. Jesus did not say, you know what? You continue that, that rip-off business. It could be some good lucrative income for both of us. You just keep doing that because I love you. No, because Jesus is full grace. He's also full truth. Amen. I'm thankful for that because left to myself, left to do it my way, I'd be off. But the whole process, the whole discipleship of following Jesus has been me discovering continually new truth from God's Word, reframing how I think, and changing, transforming, renewing my mind. Apostle Paul said that would be the way. You, so we should all sit here today, even you've, you've read Matthew 15, you, you, you're a, you read through the Bible in a year, I get that, but what do you get out of that? But... We should all be sitting here today listening, God, what would you have for me today? Me, today. That, that's how I approach scripture. God, I've read this before, but give me fresh insight for me because I want to be more like Jesus at the end of the day. That's a fair, a fair desire, a godly desire for every person here today. You didn't just come here to, to hang out with some people today and go to lunch, right? 
No way. No, you, you came because there is no show here. These musicians, we prayed earlier today, God show up like you never have before. We're not here to perform. We're not here to get every note just right. We're not here to fake it. We're here to be real and authentic. And that's, that, that's what we should want as a community, guys. And so I'm not, I'm not that polished guy either. That's okay. All right. Let's go deep. Can we go deep? Sure. All right. Thank you for permission. All right. Let's look at Matthew chapter 15. We're going to look at nine verses today. We've been looking at amazing miracles of Jesus. It's been an amazing 24 hours. Uh, but it's shifting here. And Matthew, as he's writing, it also shifts. He begins verse 1. He says, then. And he's an indicator that this is now moving on. We've, we've captured all these crazy, wonderful miracles. Two fish, five loaves. Uh, healing miracle last week because of testimony. Some of you sharing your testimony last week. Man, it just warmed my heart, stirred me up because you guys listening to the word but also applying the word. And maybe you went home and forgot. So I'm reminding you again. Be, a, be, a, be someone who's a person, a man or woman of God who has a testimony on their lips. Who uses their social media for testimony purposes. Not just what food you eat. It's a reasonable request also. We should be people who testify. Anyway, then Matthew transitions. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem. And now Jesus is still North Sea of Galilee. So these guys have traveled 80 plus miles for this purpose and what we're reading today. They've traveled 80 plus miles. Pretty good distance when you're going by foot or by horse or, or carriage or something like that. They've come to ask... Verse 2, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, because, and this is important too, they, they come 80 miles to trap Jesus and question Jesus and his, and his followers. Why are you not washing your hands like we told you to? They reference uh, the, the elders. There's more to that. I'll, I'll come back to that. But, but Jesus, instead of responding directly, which he could have, he does this method, is that someone asks you a question, and it's, instead of you getting triggered, you respond with a question. It, 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 they, they call this, this method, um, where is that? This is good. Exposing the fool, I think it is. Yeah, exposing the fool. So you ask a question in response. And Jesus goes on. For God said, honor your father, father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death. Honor your father and mother. He's referencing Jesus, the, the Ten Commandments. The first four are our relationship with God. God's relationship with us. And then the next six of the ten is how we relate to one another. Verse 5. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God, the Ten Commandments, for the sake of your own tradition of the elders. You hypocrites... You hypocrites. Hypocrites means actor. You act like something that you are not. Now, there's a place for acting. I enjoy acting. I, I met my wife while acting. But acting when you are supposed to be something else, and that's what he's calling the Pharisees and the scribes. You act like something that you are not. And it's possible even today, we look at the verses, we look at these scriptures, it's a great opportunity to examine ourselves. Are we, do what we say match what's really going on? Or could we be acting? 
for some purpose. You hypocrites, it's a strong response. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, lip service. You honor me with your lips, but get this, their hearts are far from me. Meaning that what you say does not line up right now. You say one thing, you say one thing, you act one way on Sunday, but during the week, it doesn't line up. That's a hypocrite. And the world is full of Christians who say that they're Christian, but they don't live anything like Jesus during the week. That's a hypocrite. That's an actor. That's someone who their lips honor the God. Their hands, their expressions, their face, their participation award. But their hearts are far from God. There is not alignment. Verse 9, they worship me in vain. Meaning your worship means nothing. Because God knows that your heart is not in alignment with him. And so your worship means nothing. Their teachings are merely human rules. We'll stop there for today. Who, who, what is going on here? Why, why, would, why would Pharisees and scribes travel 80 miles to go and accuse Jesus and his followers about a hand-washing ceremony? Why would they even do that? Why would they be motivated? You see, Jesus is no longer an unknown carpenter from Nazareth. Now he's well-known. People know who he is. In Matthew 14, indicator that 15 to 20,000 gather for the multiplication miracle of two fish and five loaves. Jesus is well known. And so word has gotten to Jerusalem and they are, they are coming because they see Jesus is now famous and, and you get to be well known and you're speaking out against the system and he has some critics as well. The scribes, well, they're there. They copy the word of God. They, they're listening to the Pharisees. They translate the scriptures, whatever the Pharisees are sharing. And so that is who has come to confront Jesus. And they ask, why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? What, what, what's going on with that? These are, these are oral laws that they created. Yes, we got the Ten Commandments, but on top of that, they developed additional laws, oral laws, that they passed on to the people. These oral laws eventually became a book called the Mishnah. The washing of hands was something that God created a law for the priest. And before they handled the sacred bread, they were to go through a hand washing ceremony. But then the elders decided, you know what, we, we're just going to uh, pass that on to everybody. And then everybody should have a ceremonial washing, same as us, before they handle any bread, anything that they eat. And so the Pharisees had taken this out of context and made it a requirement for everyone. And that's, that's, that's what gets us to this place, and that's what's revealed here in these nine verses. It, it is when people add to, add to, the word of God and add something else. And so that's where this begins. It's also a challenge perhaps for some of us today. It has been for me walking with God. And I, I flipped back the pages a few decades and people would come to me and see their interpretation of something is that they would add on and I didn't know any better. And so their personal convictions became law for me. Until I got a little smarter and a little more discipled, and by then I'm, I'm figuring out, well, you know, what they're saying does not line up with the Word of God. And they've passed on to me what they think and how they feel and what their personal conviction is as if it is law now for me. That's that word discernment again. See, each of us here should be a student of the Word of God. You should, you listening to me today, don't just take my word for it. You dig into the scriptures. You have a question. You think I, if something doesn't line up. Well, then you, you can question me. What do you mean when you say this? Can you explain this a little bit further? That's fair. That's fair. 
because no one is above. There's no, there's no celebrity Christian in this room. But there are celebrity Christians out there, and we allow it, and we promote it, and we celebrate it, and oftentimes our eyes are blind to it. <laughs> it's true. I'm just going to, it is. It is really true. And we have an opportunity then to ask, is this in alignment with the Word of God? I've also, someone says to me, God said, okay, I'm open to that. Because I've heard that, and sometimes it's been about, you know, I'm struggling to clarify something, struggling to figure something out, and God puts someone on my path and says, I, I believe the Lord wants me to, to share this with you. And it's in alignment with the word. It's in alignment with the, the questions that I'm asking God to reveal to me. And I'm okay with that. Now, the dark side of that is I've had people do that. And it's been an obvious attempt to try to manipulate and control me. So does God speak that way? I believe so. Have some people used it as a, as a tool of manipulation? Yes. In my life, my personal experience. And that way, it's back to me again. Am I a student of the Word? Am I a mature believer? Am I seeking God? Am I listening for what He has for me? Does what is being spoken align with the Word of God? It should. And you should be asking the same questions. Okay. Let me, let me show you how Jesus handles this. Give us uh, Luke chapter 11, please. Luke chapter 11, Jesus had finished speaking. A Pharisee invited him to eat with him, so he went and reclined at the table. The Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. Then the Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. Looking at the exterior, but Jesus calls out, the interior, and willing to do it. That means he's in a system, he's operating within a system, but he's challenging the system consistently. Jesus, okay with, I, I'm, I'm going to challenge greed when I see it. I'm going to challenge man-made rules and traditions when I see it. What does that mean for you and I? The process of maturity for you will likely be that you examine some things about your life and about your walk and those things that you hold dear and those things that are personal convictions for you. Is it clearly in the Word of God? Or was that passed on to you by the tradition of men? That's a very fair question. Believer, mature believer, generational believer, things that were perhaps passed on to you by parents, grandparents. You, you have a generational faith. Praise God for that. But are there some things there that were passed on to you that God may be revealing to you to question? That's been my process. That's been my process. There were, there were influences in my family generationally, some that I knew really well, some that I did not. Others I've discovered in my pathway of, of just following Jesus, of, of learning from others and interacting with others, discovering that sometimes people have some very strong feelings and you get to looking at it, well, wow, where does that come from? Those are fair questions to ask. Authority, authenticity versus religious foolishness. <laughs> I've encountered religious foolishness. Maybe you have. Where you get impressed with someone, and they, they indicate they're hearing from God, and you begin to wonder, well, I, are they, they hear something, and they hear in a way that I cannot hear. And part of maturity is you as a believer realizing at some point, you know what, every one of you that's here today, a follower of Jesus, you have the ability to hear the word of the Lord. You have the ability to hear the Holy Spirit speak into your life. 
If God directs me and says, you know what, I need, you need to say this word, you need to, someone needs to hear this, and then that should be in alignment then with what you also are hearing. If we don't have discernment, then we just go along with the crowd. I'm wondering here in this scene, the, the disciples of Jesus, they know the traditions of the elders. They know the rules. Jesus more concerned about what's going on on the inside than the outside. They know, and here comes the system of the day, questioning their behavior, questioning their thinking, questioning their actions, critiquing them. It's very easy, those of you who like to avoid conflict, to just jump up right quick and go, go washing your hands. Because you're, you're intimidated, and you're challenged. You're, you're a fisherman. You're a tax collector, and the religious leaders of the day questioning what you're doing, and, and you know it's the traditions of the elders, and so it's very easy for you to then launch into and react to the tradition of the day and avoid any kind of conflict, avoid saying anything different. But see, here's what we do. We look around, please hear me, we look around and we see sometimes that this ministry, oh it's big in size, a ministry that's big in size or there's a very good speaker, there's someone who's very charismatic, they have a great personality, they have the right credentials and we celebrate that, they have a large following. And so they're able to, they get invited to the conferences and people pay big money to go to the conference. And you measure that as God's hand upon something. And you'll find that you should be using discernment because not everyone who shows up in that way, just as these Pharisees and scribes did upon the scene, that not everyone is walking with God the way that they should be. Discernment would reveal to you, you know what? I don't think I need to buy that $100 ticket for that conference. I'm, I'm not. I'm over, I'm over conferences. I'm not going to any. I'm also not paying $100 for tickets to a concert either. I don't know how those people live. I don't know. But what I do know is that Christianity is a marketing niche. There are people that are in Christianity and in mainstream that are famous and selling books and selling conferences and speaking, and they're in it for the money. Can you believe someone would do that? If you can't, then naive one, I, check, check it out. Because we do some things like that that promote it, and as long as you'll pay, they'll keep doing it. But you and I are part of and waiting on and looking for. I'm looking for a, a Savior that is returning. You are, right? We're, we're longing for his appearing. Because we're, we're really we're tired of this mess. And we know that what he has for us is better. And so as long as he wants us here, then we're going to do all right, we're going to do our best to be a voice and be a testimony and to follow after him and, 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 and live holy as he is holy and be ready for uh, the, the bridegroom to come. But he's coming back for a bride that is ready for his appearing, that is longing, that is, that is ready for the Lord Jesus Christ to return at any moment. And so I'm leaning in. I want, to, I want what God wants for me. I want what God wants for you. Do you want what God wants for you? That's a great question. Because otherwise, see, if you're, you're going to be impressed with everything else. Someone's well-spoken. Someone's organized. Someone has a good personality. They're attractive. Good-looking people. Men, women. You can get duped like that. 
And you can hear something that's false and not true. Sometimes it's because someone has the right last name. Just because something looks and sounds good does not mean that it is good. It's been going on that way for a long time. 1 Samuel 16, 7, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I remember hearing that, and I'm thinking, I, I, I like that. I find hope in that. I'm glad the Lord sees and knows the heart. Because otherwise, I'm competing with everybody else you know, you know, and I don't even have hair. I mean, <laughs> but see, you guys, you, you, you got to be careful. Single people hear me a minute, too. God's looking at the heart, but so many single people I talk to, they're looking at the outward appearance as a first thing. You got godly men and women single, but they don't meet your criteria because you're looking for a model first. I know I'm close to home. What if, you, what if you flipped the script? What if you actually looked at Scripture just like God did and think, you know what? God's working in someone's life, and that may be who God has for me, single person. Not making an idol of Christian leaders and celebrities. Here's what happen, happens in 2 Timothy 4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, what they want, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to do what? To say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to actual myths, those things that are made up. For the time will come. This is the Apostle Paul, and he says there's a time coming like that. And he's writing this thousands of years ago. You're not going to put up with it anymore. You don't even want to hear sound doctrine. But you do like your ears tickled. They're itching, and you, you, you do want them tickled. So you will, you will gather around you a great number of teachers to say what exactly you want to hear. Folks, we live in that day. We live in that day where you don't have to, you think that you don't have to line your life up with the Word of God. You think that you can... Can you leave that verse up, please? You think that you can create your own doctrines, and we do that. And that's what I'm trying to caution you, if I can talk very plainly to you for a moment. You may have grown up in a tradition where everything embraces Wesleyan, or everything in, embraces Calvinism. And there are other wonderful theologians and Men of God, women of God, those who help frame our thinking and our theology. We get very comfortable with diving into one particular way, and that fits us, where perhaps God might be revealing the word to us, and we begin to see something new. But we're battling against, this has been passed on to me for a couple generations now, I'm trying to bring some caution to your life. I'm trying to get you to look at things with new lens for a moment. Not just embra fully embracing just one thing in one flavor, in one way. I want the word of God. I want what he has for me. I don't want my itching ears satisfied. It happens though. It happens. going to all right this uh, let me get to the text <laughs> I'm going to get there though whoever said that I love in this text in these first nine verses they've come to accuse the disciples of Jesus and there's no recording in these verses that the disciples actually said anything. There's great criticism from the religious leaders of the day 
and they're not defending themselves. They're not defending themselves. They don't have to defend themselves. How often is it that for you and I, that's the same thing, that we have accusation against us? And, and pride wants to rise up and bow back and let's, let's go at it, verbally or however else. But perhaps humility rises and says, you know what, just be quiet. <laughs> See, the Lord's got the ability to punch somebody right in the mouth. He does. I don't have to fight every battle. We sing... This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. Yes, amen. It's quite possible. You don't have to fight every battle yourself. God perfectly, that good, good father, perfectly capable of defending me and you. Narrows my focus. Keeps my blood pressure in check. Keeps me from being triggered and emotional about everything. Yes. He's trustworthy. It takes me a while to figure that out. But I can trust him. He's got my front. He's got my back. Maybe you need to hear that today. Because you've been triggered by everything. And you're fighting everything. And your emotions are everywhere. And your anxiety level is through the roof. Do you walk with a living God or, or do you run around like a pagan? Jesus responds to the question with a question. A rabbinical method of dealing with conflict, of backing down a fool. This, this word of the elders, this, this new law, it's called Cor Corbin Law. It's called Corbin Law. And it, it, what they had done here, and the reason for all of this, the reason this... The, these nine verses go down this way. They, they have created this law, and it's in a book. You can look that up, Mishnah. But these, these oral laws eventually were in a book. But these oral laws added to. And what they had done is created like a tax shelter. And that's what Jesus is challenging. As he says, the commandments. You're supposed to Honor your, honor your parents here. Part of honoring them is when they have needs, especially as they age, is that you would provide for them. But they introduced their own tradition, went around circumventing even the Ten Commandments. That's what it means to circumvent, is you see something and you don't like it necessarily, and so you get creative and come up a way to go around what God has clearly spoken. And that's what has happened here. And so they offer like a tax shelter. You know what? You don't want, you, you want, we don't want to say you don't want to care for your parents, but we're going to give you an out. Is that you can bring that to the temple, and we will hold that for you, and it will be exempt from being used for personal needs, the care of your parents even. And so when Jesus is challenged, Jesus comes right back at them and corrects them because they have found a way around the Word of God. They've circumvented. They've created a shelter. We do the same thing. I'll get to that in a moment. But that's what he's revealing here, Jesus that you are circumventing the Word of God. It's a possibility for any one of us here today that we could also not like what we hear from the Word of God and we find a way around it that looks okay, but it's really the ways of man. And it becomes tradition. Yes. Becomes, uh, you know, sounds okay, but that's not God's way. And when I, circum when I choose to circumvent the Word of God and not embrace the Word of God, then it nullifies the Word of God and the power of the Word of God to transform my life. 
Same for you. Same for you. Same for you. We can circumvent the word of God. It, 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 it is not what we should be doing. The result is the word of God has no power in the lives of God's people. They end up following a false doctrine. We embrace a doctrine that explains away the word of God. It's quite possible. And I invite you to, you know, if, if you read the word of God, you, you might walk away with and think, you know what, I should be trusting God more. Because I see God do some amazing things. But if you embrace too much the teaching and doctrine of any man, that trying to summarize everything and put everything in a compartment together for you. And that defines you and explains away the opportunity to have faith. The result would be that we create shelters for sin and compromise. I have an image for you. The Word of God, you have that? The word of God is not convenient for you, so you create or adopt a doctrine of men that circumvents the laws of God. That's, that's the caution for you today. The word of God, not convenient for you. Not convenient for you. See, it, it's not convenient for you in many ways. Let me give you 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. The Apostle Paul, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, slanderers, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. What does that mean for you? You see, Paul packages all sexual immorality together. But what happens is we know what this says. We know what this speaks about those who would fornicate, having sexual relationships with someone who you're not married to, committing adultery and even continuing to be in a church and serve in a church and saying something, but it doesn't line up. Homosexuality, making excuses. Here's what happens, though. We know the Word of God, and it's all well and good until it is someone that you know. Let me tell you, every person here today, every family here today, you probably have some circumstance that represents some of this. There's sexual immorality going on. And when it's your son... When it's your sibling, when it's your friend, and you know what the Word of God says, but you choose last month to celebrate pride because that's your friend, and you love them, and God loves everybody. Where you've heard me say before, the most loving thing you can do is give both grace and truth. Yes, God, God loves you. But God calls us all to repentance. Every, throughout Old Testament, New Testament, he's a God of repentance. He calls us to repentance. You don't get to just go on any way you want. You do not get to go on in your sin. But now there are, there are people, there are churches, there are conferences you can go to that will they'll try to blow this out of the water and say, oh, you know, Paul this or Paul that. No, Paul spoke truth. And I'm telling you truth today. But you want to listen to somebody who looks the part, beautiful, handsome, got resources, puts together a good product, and disagrees with the Apostle Paul's clear teaching and embraces that, that's how we coddle people. That's how we just, 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 oh, Jesus loves everybody. Yes, he does. And he loves you so much that he calls you to repentance, out of your sin and into marvelous light. That's the Jesus that loves you. And so if you tolerate that, if you're silent... 
or you want to be a teacher. See, not everybody should, not everybody should be teaching. Jesus says that. James says that. James 3.1, not, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. You want to be judged strictly? You go grab the mic. You better be making sure that what you're sharing and what you're teaching is lining up with the full counsel of God. The word of God complete. Jesus was full grace. He was also full truth. That's what I want. I, I, I don't want just my opinion and my ways. I want to discover what does Jesus say and how do I apply that to my life right now today? See, that, that, that's, the, that's, that's the possibility that every person here has. See, you see, you hear something, you hear the word, you hear a confrontational teaching, the Holy Spirit moving in the room, perhaps nudging you, perhaps making you even angry right now. How dare he speak that way? Yes, it's the Holy Spirit, a God who loves you. Thank God in this moment that your heart is still soft enough to hear the voice of the living God. The opposite of that is you're so hard-hearted that nothing will reach you. But now when you hear someone coddling, someone directing people the, the wrong way, and that's your friend, and that's someone in your circle, then whose place is it then to step in and say, I'm sorry, friend, but the whole counsel of God says something different than what you're sharing. That's the loving thing to do. Check ourselves. God, we want what you want. Otherwise, it's false teaching. It's teaching that tickles your ears. It's not truth. Now, you can embrace that all day long. But as long as you'll come here, folks, I'm going to have to tell you the truth. It's the full counsel of the living God. And his ways are higher than my ways. And I'm going to embrace his truth and share his truth and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Do not let your pride get in the way. Don't not be those who honor me with their lips and their heart is far from me. We decide when we are convicted whether, whether we lean in for change or we create our own law and nullify and void the power of God to work in our life. You see, if I'm going to read this today, and I'm going, you know what, that messes with me. Or I, you know, I, that's just not fair. That, you know, that, I, I've, got a, I've got a sibling, or I've got a cousin, or I've got a friend, or I've got a child that doesn't agree with this, and they're, they're not going to embrace this. And see, I can create them my own shelter of sin and compromise. That's possible. Or I can be in prayer and say, God, give me the ability to communicate in full grace and in full truth. But the only hope, the only hope is to share the truth of the Word of God and not embrace everything of culture and try to tw twist and change the Word of God. Amen. I said a moment ago, it's likely every person in this room, you have a friend or a relative living in a lifestyle of sexual immorality. That includes me. I know people. I got friends. I got family. They could care less what the Apostle Paul says. If I want to keep the peace and get an extra piece of chicken at the family dinner, I might need to, they would prefer I be quiet. But they might be tuning in online today, and they know what I'm sharing is the absolute truth. But how many families and how many rooms and how many circles are represented in this room today? And the idea of a God who loves you enough to speak by his word, move by his spirit, give you opportunity to transform your corrupt and carnal mind. He loves you that much, and he gives you time and opportunity to transform your mind 
and to become a voice who testifies that there may be great revival in your house and in your home and in your family because you align your life finally with the word of the living God. Amen. See, the full counsel of God and his word, it always leads us to repentance. Always. But here's what could happen. If we, went, if we would say, you know what, I'm going to circumvent. I know what God says, but I've got to find another little around the end here and a little shelter that, that we can hide in together. Here's what it looks like. Jesus said, you hypocrites, you actors, you fake Christian, you fake preacher." You fake prophets, you fake apostles, you fake fill in the blank. You got God first in your profile, but you're fake. Proverbs 31 woman, but you're fake. Man of God, fake. You fool followers, but we're not fooling the one who knows the heart of man and knows What's going on the inside? That we're not going to be a people that are just cleaning the outside of the cup, but a people that will lean into the living God, lean into his truth, even the hard truth, and not be those who would walk away, but embrace what he has for us. Because here's the thing. Jesus said, those who honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. If your mouth does not match your life, all of it, is a waste of time. Your worship is in vain. Your teachings, nothing but the teachings of men. Wow. Can't be anybody here today that that, that's what you want. That the, the actual diagnosis of your life is that you're a hypocrite. You're an actor. You're an actress when it comes to spiritual things. You hear the word of God, you act a certain way, you play the part, and perhaps your motivation even is control and greed and money and control of things. And the God of heaven would speak clearly to his church and speak and say, come out of darkness and walk in light. Embrace the truth that I have for you. Walk with me. Walk with me. The opposite of that, the opportunity, if if you don't embrace that, is that you're going to live your life off the laws that you built. And it looks like this. See, there's no pressure then to get married. No pressure to walk in holiness. We know you're engaged. But being engaged, you're not married. And so you don't have sexual relations Boyfriend and girlfriend. If you are, then you're circumventing the, the word of God. Unforgiveness. If you're here today and you're harboring unforgiveness against someone. And you've justified it. And you participate in communion. And you sit here with a smile on your face. That's not what God wants for you. God wants you to forgive and walk in forgiveness. If you don't, then you're in a prison that you've created. But it's very possible, child of God, to sit here week after week and act like everything is fine and really you're bitter on the inside and there's unforgiveness that you're harboring. Generosity. Generosity. Malachi 3.10, you know, we're, we're supposed to take the, the full tithe into the storehouse. And there's going to be incredible things happening. But how many of you today, you've circumvented the word of God? Golly. There's no way the, the finances of this church represent the tithe of the people gathered here today. Or joining online. You've circumvented the things of God. And you, th- you think, you know what? He's not going to know, and no one's going to notice. 
You don't want to bring the full tithe into the storehouse. You want to control where it goes. That's circumventing the word of God. That's doing things your way. I know this is inconvenient truth. But I love you enough to tell you. Guys, this is real church. This is not warm and fuzzy, gummy bear church. This is real word of God looking at the example that Jesus gave us in these scriptures today. They're worried about hand washing before food. Jesus takes it next level. You're circumventing the word of God. You're creating tax shelters. You're creating sin shelters where it's your way. And God hasn't intervened or no one's been bold enough to speak it. And the, I'm speaking today, and I believe by the authority and the anointing of the power of God in this room today and online today, there's a spirit of the living God that's alive and well and moving throughout this room today and speaking to his people, those who will listen, yes. and those who will say, God, help me today. Let me lean into holiness. Yes. Let me lean into your word. Let me be grateful I need some musicians. You guys come up here and help me a minute. It might take me a minute to wrap up. I'm, I'm trying. The sin shelters in your life, they have the potential to void the word of God and its power to transform you. There's potential for that. But a God who loves you, a God who would speak truth to you, you see, there's a better version of you. There's a more anointed version of you a more powerful version of you, a more discerning version of you. James tells us in 5.16, the prayer of a righteous person, powerful and effective. The, the prayer of a righteous person. Because you'll pray and, and God will answer because you're actually walking with the God of heaven. It changes everything. Because you could be here today and you're just very content to walk through a very religious mindset. You've said yes to Jesus. You've put your faith in him for eternity. And if I were to say to you, in, in light of everything I've shared with you today, that without faith it's impossible to please God. And it might be that a lot of you in this room because of your tendency to wrap your head and your hands around everything going on in your life, that we might have to search really hard before we see faith operating in your life anywhere. And so I'm asking you today, we get ready to sing, get ready to pray. Search yourself this day. Where are you possibly circumventing the Word of God in your life? You just, you're just not in alignment. You're stubborn or you've operated like, you know what? He'll never know and nobody else knows. But the Holy Spirit is like this amazing doctor and able to work down into the places in your life and mine that we refuse to let other people know about. And there could be unforgiveness. And there could be those sleeping around and no one else knows about it. And you know what? If that's the case, your lips profess one thing, but your heart is far from God. You can bring all things into an alignment today. You can examine yourself and say, you know what? I, I, there's no way. I've been circumventing the hand of God. I've been circumventing going around His truth. And I've embraced that. I've celebrated that. I've let it go unchallenged. And God would speak to you today. It's time to get life, your will, everything in alignment with the God of heaven today. Yes. You'll decide. These guys are going to play today. They've got nothing fancy. But they bring their hearts. They bring their instruments. They bring their, their, their purpose to honor and glorify him. That should be mine and your purpose as well. No one to be entertained. And if you don't want to inter be entertained, come and join me again next week. We're going to pray in a moment. I think I've got a prayer team here today that will help me pray. If not, I do have some elders here today.
But there are those who will anoint with oil and pray with you, join together in prayer, believing that God will do something that only he can do. And faith will be operating in your life. God will not leave us alone. Won't you stand with me today? Lord, as we stand before you, I'm grateful, personally grateful for your word today. I'm grateful for an audience gathered in this room and online. God, we have not come to be entertained. But God, we have come to embrace the truth of your word and the power that that word represents. Praying that the word cut deeper than any two-edged sword today in lives in this room and online today. God, let us examine our lives in light of everything. We'll take not the word of any man, but we want the word of the living God resting in us, challenging us, transforming us. Let, Lord, destroy in the name of Jesus every sin shelter in this room today. Any place of compromise. God, awaken seeds of truth sown into individuals in this room today. We will not live our lives as if nothing matters and truth doesn't confront and the spirit doesn't move but it will be exactly the opposite we will be a, a people of God that walk by faith and uh, trusting, believing that you are going to intersect and join us in this life for every troubled thought that we have in our minds today we'll cast every care at your feet because you love us, you care for us and you are the living God in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Gracias. Tú estás aquí, Señor. Tú eres milagroso, eres el que abres camino. A ti cantamos hoy, Señor.
Father, we honor you today. We worship you. Praying now, many in this room, they need to move into the week. They need to go and be your church. And I pray you be with each one. Others of, of us still worshiping, still praying. And God, I pray wherever anyone is at in this room today, I'm trusting, Lord, that you are revealing sin shelters and that beyond my words, Holy Spirit, that you would move in the life of every person. May we all examine ourselves in light of God's word and God in, in light of what you've called us to. Deepen our walk with you. Thank you for shining upon us. Thank you for equipping your church. Thank you for the high calling to be a voice of the living God on this earth. In Jesus' name that you can quietly be dismissed if you need prayer you want to worship these guys are going to continue have a fantastic week in the name of Jesus Sobrando, aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Y siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, estás sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. Siempre estás, siempre está sobrando. We make a miracle work. Milagroso Señor, y en este lugar de tu presencia es descender tu poder a los que estamos aquí. Creo en ti. Jesús, lo que harás. 
De madrugada yo me acercaré a ti Mi alma te anhela y tiene sed Para ver tu gloria y tu poder Mi socorro ha sido tú Y en la sombra de tu sala Yo me postraré Mi alma está pegada a ti Porque tu diestra Me ha sostenido Oh, tu diestra me ha sostenido Temprano yo te buscaré, oh Señor De madrugada yo me acercaré a ti 
alma te anhela y tiene sed para ver tu gloria y tu poder y su conocido tú y en la sombra de tus alas yo me acostaré mi alma está pegada a ti porque tú estás Me ha sostenido, oh tu diestra, me ha sostenido, mi socorro ha sido tú, y en la sombra de tus alas yo me acosaré, mi alma está pegada a ti. Porque tu diestra me ha sostenido, oh tu diestra me ha sostenido. 